Hello beautiful people, hello beautiful souls and welcome to my new Instagram live on English. Today my special guest will arrive very soon and I'm so honored to have him as a, my guest. How are you people? Now I will wait for my special guest and then I will introduce him and me. Maybe there is someone who doesn't know me and who doesn't know Franz. So uh, first we will introduce uh, each other. Uh, hello Franz and uh, welcome to this beautiful live. I hope today we will give something very, very special. I don't hope, I know we will give because uh, two times when we worked these lives, uh, we gave a good energy. And my mother, I can tell you, uh, which doesn't know a word of English, uh, she just watched and says and said, oh my God, you had such a beautiful energy. Oh. I didn't understand a word, but I understand everything. My mother said that. And I know that uh, everybody who is here will uh, feel this energy today in this modern world when everything is hurry everything is so stressful so painful we don't have time for anything what is uh, most impressed uh, what is most uh, precious to us we don't have time for ourselves for people we love we only hurry going there being here doing that and I want with this live uh, to bring some peace, some beautiful energy, some uh, love and gratitude, which is our uh, topic today. My name is Tanja Zivković. I'm from Serbia and uh, I'm Reiki teacher as France. And today I'm so happy uh, to have you as my guest so uh, you can tell about you some words and uh, I can tell before you tell about you uh, some words uh, and that is uh, eight years ago when I started learning Reiki and I didn't uh, I don't uh, say say bad stuff about my teachers never but I started Reiki and um, this knowledge I I, um, I had was um, not en not enough for me, and I started to to search for more knowledge and uh, more more explanations about Reiki because I was like I'm on another pl another planet with starting with the energy with Reiki, and then France I uh, found one of your. Uh, beautiful beautiful uh, it was in australia some reiki conference i can't remember what was the name of that conference and yeah. and your uh your about one hour your uh, your words uh your explanation about reiki your love about reiki i was amazed and i said wow uh, you were my inspiration maybe i didn't tell you uh, you were my inspiration to start to work Reiki, not just like uh, uh, hand on healing, uh, but it uh, work with your, with my heart, soul, and my everything. So I'm so happy, and I really think that you are one of the five, the best teachers in the world. That is my opinion. Thank you. And thank you. Uh, you are here. So let me let you introduce you. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm from, thank you for inviting me. And uh, I've been teaching full time for the last almost 25 years now worldwide. Uh, I trained since 2012 with a Japanese priest, Takeda Ajari. But the first time I went to Japan was in 2001 and started to train with Japanese teachers. I first learned Reiki in Nepal, Kathmandu, from an English teacher. So I still feel, you know, it, it, it never stops. We have to keep going. So I'm really happy with my current teacher, who is this priest in Japan. He lives in a tiny little monastery. He's a very, uh, one of those very strict priests, but I learn a lot, but I like it. 
and I love the sharing, the being with people like it is. And I think it's so needed these days in our community, in our world, in our society. Uh, that, as you say, we're so busy, rush, rush, rush. We don't have time for other people anymore. So to actually take time out. Just before uh, I joined, I had to walk a little bit uh, faster. I was in a little cafe and occasionally they do live music. And so I tried to go there to support the cafe, to support the artists, and then just talk a little bit with random kind people and it's so nice to just see people smile and that we like just before i left this woman sat almost kind of next to me and she cleaned some cups and i picked some cups and cleaned them and said oh thank you and we had a little brief moment and it was just so nice and when i left oh thank you nice to meet you and this kind of communication for me is already ready yeah. Yeah? it's not just as you say hands-on healing but it's communication of gratitude gratitude that we actually can wake up in the morning because that is not for sure either so and yeah so i've been doing this for many years i wrote quite a few books my latest book is the way of reiki the inner teachings of mika sui which is going really well and uh yeah so glad to be here I'm so glad you are here and I am glad we have a beautiful topics uh, to talk about that is divine love and gratitude and uh, we have something special for you we will do meditation on gratitude and meditation on love uh, friends will do with us on uh, love uh, I will oh, no uh, he will be he will be doing on gratitude I will be doing on love but uh, there is no difference between between love gratitude and this beautiful stuff uh, it's all in us and uh, one of reiki principles you said uh, to be kind yeah. to others and uh, there is there's so less uh, very a few uh, kind people uh, today uh, we need to uh, to wake up kindness in people and first of all we must we must we should be uh, better people we can be uh, kind to others what do you say about kindness and uh, where is this kindness uh, because after corona many stuffs uh, people uh, people uh, don't have closeness like earlier there is so much uh, social media, but so much, so less social connections. People are so uh, in, 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 uh, in, in solitude. Yeah. There is solitude, a lot of, and there is so uh, little kindness. So how can we wake up uh, social connecting? How can we uh, wake up kindness in others? Yeah, I think when we look at the precepts already, yeah, the first thing is uh, for today. And I think this is a really important element. So, for, for example, Thich Nhat Hanh, a really famous teacher, he once said, uh, peace is not something we hope for, it's something we do today. So for me, it's the same with being kind, or sometimes the precept is being translated as be compassionate to yourself and others. And so compassion or kindness is something, not what we hope for, but what we actually have to practice today. And sometimes that takes some effort, you know, going, getting out of the way to do something for someone, ring them, talk to them, knock on their door, uh, help them. And, but I think, I think Mikasui really in the system of Reiki point to something very interesting. So the first precept then for today and then do not anger do not worry be grateful then be true to your way and your being and then show compassion to yourself and others and that self-compassion to yourself and others is kind of the last one but it's not linear it's interwoven in a way but if we still have a lot of worry or anger ourselves very difficult to be kind to other people right because if i walk around with a lot of anger like this then already not many people are going to talk to me, they don't want to interact with me, then it's, it's also harder to, for me to show this loving compassion and kindness. 
And therefore, first of all, we have to soften our anger and worry. Also the worry because what if I be kind to this person or what would they say or how would they react? You know, like I see this a lot. I'm, I'm think actually we should have radical kindness where we just, I do this a lot and sometimes it happens naturally. Sometimes I, when I feel a little bit heavier then I need to do it a little bit more conscious. But just to talk to people the other day, there was someone in a cafe, oh, I like your earrings. Or there was a guy sitting with a beautiful jacket. Oh, I like your jacket. And suddenly you feel, they start to talk, they open up. Why? Because you have opened up. And when you have opened up, then you give kind of permission for the other person to open up. So sometimes people say, oh, I feel very lonely. But then they, they walk around town like this, but you have to take that first step. If you feel lonely, take the step to open up and say, hey, this is me without my worry and anger. This is me by being grateful that I'm alive, for, even if I feel lonely and that I'm true to my way and my being. So the way I interact with people, with myself, and then that compassion, kindness and love, all same thing ultimately, then, then that can flow so much easier. And sometimes that could be just with words. Sometimes it could be the other day I bought some, uh, I bought some chocolates for my mom, but then I saw some chocolates and I thought, oh, I'll buy this for this friend who has a little cafe. I dropped it off. See you. Like these little things doesn't have to cost money ultimately. And we, for me, uh, on a very deep level, when we look at love and compassion in the system of Reiki, but I think generally, it's a compassion and kindness what doesn't change according to circumstances. And now we see this kindness and love changes constantly. Eh? Like this moment, I'm being really kind to you, and then maybe you say something what I don't like, and I'm not being kind to you. So that's a kindness what changes constantly but if i can maintain this kindness even if you say something what i don't agree with or maybe you say something what i don't like at all or maybe you slander me that i still feel here is my love here is my kindness and that is something we have to cultivate it doesn't come easy and the best cultivation is of course first doing the meditation practices, like within yoga, Tai Chi, Chi Kung, it doesn't have to be Reiki. Uh, so in the system of Reiki, the first thing is being in our body. So not too much in our head, because when we're too much in our head, then we get worried, oh, this person looks like this, I'm not gonna be kind to them. Uh, in fact, uh, this is, I, I don't really like saying this because it feels a little bit um, egocentric in a way, but, it was such a great example. I went dancing. I love dancing. And uh, I went dancing into this club. And this is, uh, it started like 7.30 in the evening till midnight. So it's nice. And so I'm dancing away. That evening, three different women came up to me. They were way younger than me. And all three of them almost said exactly the same thing. I said, wow, can I tell you something? I said, yeah, of course. You're shining tonight. I said, thank you. And so if you shine, imagine it's like a light, then that light emanates already in everything. Then we don't have to do anything else. This is for me already Reiki, this great bright light which emanates out because you feel happy, you feel content, you're grateful that you're alive, you're grateful that you're breathing, you're grateful for whatever is happening. And therefore, you, the the other people, when they come in contact with this light, can already say, oh, I, I can already use this light to light my own light or to remember my own light and to feel and be in this beauty. So we, we, we see this already. And I think it's so important, therefore, the, the Reiki precepts in that way that we can start to embody them. And that we then come to a base of a kindness and compassion what doesn't really change according to circumstances uh, because now we say oh, i'm going to be really kind to these people or this country or whatever 
and not kind to the others. Mm -hmm. But and then I, without actually, maybe this is a great example. Uh, many years ago, I was teaching in a class, and um, this class had many uh, practitioners and teachers and students who we did um, working on animals in shelters. Mm -hmm. And so in, in the morning, we come into the class, and there's one man, he lifts up his hands, he wants to say something. He said, oh, France, this morning, uh, I worked on some animals at the animal shelter before I came to the class. And he told this story. He said there was three dogs in a kennel. One dog became aggressive, killed one dog, and then injured the other dog. So he said, okay, this morning I did uh, hands-on healing on the injured dog, right? I said, oh, that's beautiful. I said, did you also do hands-on healing on the dog who killed the dog and injured the other one? And he goes, no, no, that, that's a bad dog. And I go, mm -hmm. But that's not really kind because that dog, maybe the aggressive dog needed more healing than the injured dog because the aggression came up. That means that that dog actually needed more healing and needed more love and needed more kindness. And if we work like this, then we constantly stay in an imbalance within ourselves, right? And within society, because we constantly say this is good and this is bad. And therefore, there will never be a beautiful equilibrium, a beautiful balance. So in this case, we also need to do hands-on healing or send Reiki or be Reiki for that kind of dog. And of course, that means for people, countries, everything needs to be included. So that's a compassion or a love what doesn't change according to circumstances. It doesn't change because we, we say we don't like these people or I only like animals and not people or I only like trees and not animals. And, and like all of these things is, is actually coming from our own <clears throat> confusion. So <clears throat> therefore, the first point is really let go of the anger, right? Because if I'm angry, for example, in this case, the dog, then it's very difficult to be kind to that dog. Then I need to let go of my worry that, oh, the dog is aggressive. Maybe what will it do to me, etc. Of course, we need to be smart, but it doesn't mean we cannot do healing or love or kindness. Then we need to be grateful that we are alive, that we're right here in a moment and that gratefulness that we actually can show compassion, that we can show love to people, that we can be an example of this. Then we- You said- Sorry. You said uh, being Reiki, not only doing Reiki, yeah. not only uh, uh not only being that uh, being that Reiki like, and I can uh, share some, uh, some uh, story of my Reiki class. I had one class uh, with my Reiki student, I think uh, second level it was, and I was studying about uh, Reiki symbols uh, and my student uh, very, very uh, good understand that. And uh, her daughter was uh, near us. She's about eight years old. And uh, she was playing, not, uh, we, thought, we, th we thought that she doesn't listen what we talk about, where we do, do the treatment initiation, then we do a class. And uh, that little girl, th that was so amazing. Uh, she came to us and bring what she draw. And she draw Chokorei, Reiki symbol, and says, Chokorei, Chokorei, and yes. this is powerful symbol. And she said about, uh, she uh, only, uh, she doesn't um she doesn't uh, she uh, uh, how can i explain uh what she said uh, her, her mother said wow magdalena how you know reiki symbol i don't know reiki yeah, yeah. symbol yet i'm learning it now how you know that the the child said mom i am reiki yeah beautiful that is so so mighty that uh, children uh, can 
so relate with that energy. Yeah. What do you say? Did you have experience with a child with Reiki? Yeah, I think, you know, like little kids, we, we see this, for example, you know, say two kids are playing in the sandpit and they suddenly get upset with each other. Maybe they even give each other a little push or a punch. But the next moment, they're friends again, right? So we can see it doesn't really stick, right? That anger or that frustration or whatever, that doesn't stick. They can let it go so easy because they are still Reiki. Of course, we are still Reiki, but then we grow up and we put all these layers over it. And then someone says something to us and we're angry for the rest of our life. And we carry that anger. And then we feel, then we wonder why we get sick. Then we wonder why we feel unhappy. Then we wonder why there is no kindness in the world because we don't feel kind anymore because we carry this thing with us, like from the past, what we should have put down straight away, just like these little kids. So these little kids, you know, for me, we're born Reiki. He, uh, Mikusui said, everything in the universe is Reiki. What means we're born already like Reiki. That means a cup is Reiki, the tree is Reiki, everything is Reiki. And traditionally, the word Reiki in Japan means Buddha nature or Kami. Kami, a divine being. So everything is Buddha nature. Everything is a divine being. But then we grow up and we learn from society, mom and dad, uh, what we read on television, this is good, this is bad. And then suddenly we we start to really lose this. Huh? It's still there, but we cover it up. We start to cover up these this beautiful luminosity. Miku Usui said, this is a great bright light, the great bright light of love and compassion and gratitude. And then we cover it up with these lampshades of worry and anger and frustration. And therefore, we feel this light is not shining anymore, but it's still there. It's just that we don't notice it. But these little kids still have, it's so beautiful to see. The other day, I was walking somewhere and these two little kids with their mom, they were, um, it was raining and they had these cute little boots on and they were jumping in the puddles and they had so much fun. We should do this still, right? But when we jump in a puddle and we have fun and people look at us, oh, yeah, but you're, you're almost... <laughs> He's not good. <laughs> you're 51. Why do you do this? You know, I don't really care. <laughs> but this is how we've become because we cannot be playful anymore. And therefore, when we're not really playful, we contract, right? We lose this playfulness what we have in as a kid so everything is contracting and so what is also contracting we become more narrow-minded our heart and love is contracting everything is becoming more selfies and therefore when we start to practice we actually really start to open up more more expansion openness and in that we become automatically more playful again yeah, that how we were as kids doesn't mean we all have to jump in puddles but because again we're all different and even kids are different <laughs> but then we can be really more true to our way in our being and when we more in that true to our way in our being then we feel like it was my mom's birthday uh on saturday 87 yes i saw <laughs> It's so beautiful. I mean, like, the, the, I've got an uncle, and I was born, and he knew me already. So he's not really an uncle, but it's uncle, right? And he is uh, early 90s. He's got difficulty walking. His legs keep flopping underneath him. And so he, he comes walking in with a walker, but his mind is still smart. He's dressed smart. And he is laughing about his own clumsiness, right? His leg is going like this and he's trying to take his coat off and he's laughing with me. And, and it's just so beautiful to see that I could see a, a childlike charm still in him. And therefore, I had a friend coming to my mom, um, straight away started to talk to my uncle a bit because she could see his light, right? Still this playfulness. My uncle wasn't really go, oh, my legs, I keep falling off, oh, poor me, I'm getting old. No, he was embracing it. He was actually yeah. grateful for his funny legs, right? Because 
by that, sometimes I think also when we talk about gratitude, we only think, oh, I'm, I'm only going to be grateful for the good things in my life. But my uncle, I saw he was grateful for his funky little legs who kept not really working all the time. I, he had to constantly walk behind a walker. He can't even use a cane because even then he falls over because he see it as something, actually it makes me quite funny. I, I walk around like a funky little penguin and so it makes me laugh and therefore other people laugh and therefore I see it also as, okay, I still have this, but I also am still breathing. I still can enjoy a birthday party. I can still enjoy life. I can still shine my light. And when we work like this, so even that he's never practiced the system of Reiki, he's like Reiki. He is love. He's so kind to everybody. In me, it's just so beautiful to see. So sometimes we see people like this and we realize, oh, it's being love being Reiki, being compassionate, right? We don't say, I'm going to do love. But sometimes we say, I'm going to do Reiki, or we say, I'm not going to do compassion, but we're going to be Reiki. We're going to be compassionate. We're going to be love with every single cell of our being. And uh, that is really, I think, important. So sometimes and don't get me wrong, I think it's great to do protest and stand up for our rights, but sometimes that becomes also uh, anger against anger. Right? Yes. And then, in fact, we, we manifesting anger within ourselves, so that anger is exactly the same as the other person's anger. And it, it will, in the end, it will never work. So we need to learn how to do this, protesting in a kind, loving way with love and compassion and with kindness. And I think this will change and we have, but we have to see it. But again, to be able to do this, I need to first recognize this kindness and love within myself. So I always say this, this is a glass of water. And if I shake it, water comes out, not coffee, not tea, not vodka. <laughs> <Maybe. laughs> but, so water comes out. What means if I'm being shaken by outer circumstances, partner, family, society, the world, what comes out? Is anger coming out? That means anger is in me. Is worry coming out? That means worry is in me. Is love coming out? Is compassion coming out? That means compassion is in me. So the more we realize this inner light, luminosity, kindness, and compassion within me, then very easy to share this with other people. Then people will notice it, right? They will notice your luminosity. They notice your kindness, your love. It emanates from you. Like if I look at your face, I see this smile, your eyes are sparkling. Very different than someone who is full of anger, right? And therefore, that smile and his openness and his sparkling eyes is already Reiki. Sometimes we get so caught up and we think the system of Reiki is hands on healing. But in the precepts, it says just about the mind. It doesn't say anything about hands on healing. It doesn't say anything about energy either. It's a state of mind what triggers the healing. It's the state of mind what triggers this wide open spaciousness. It's the state of mind what triggers that energy. And then if we can work from that, then your hands on healing will be very different, but your life will be different. Your emanation, what you emanate in your daily life, no matter if you're at work or with your parents or with your relationship or in a cafe, then already something quite different takes place. Fantastic. Uh, now I want with you uh, to do that meditation about gratitude. But before we do that meditation, we can talk a little more about gratitude. A lot of people uh, want to feel gratitude, but can't. Uh, yeah. They are trying to to, work, to writing journaling of about gratitude and uh, doing stuff and says uh, said. I can't feel gratitude. I, do, I don't know to feel gratitude. Yeah. 
how can uh, improve our gratitude you says you said uh, we can uh, practice uh, kindness so how can we practice gratitude yeah. how yeah, would you start i mean the, the it is a bit tricky, right? I watched a documentary the other day about a Tibetan teacher. He's in his 80s and he was in prison for 20 years. And uh, the way he talks about the prison being there for 20 years, he, he was grateful. And he said, I was actually grateful to be in prison for 20 years because that gave me a lot of time to practice. And he said, someone asked, him like I, I param, paraphrasing he said what was the hardest thing for you to do he said losing my compassion for uh, or not being compassionate for my the prison guards he said I, I wanted to be compassionate to them I needed to stay in a compassionate space for them I'm like wow this is powerful shit right and if he can do it in in a way we can always do it you know, I think it, it, that person is not something different than us. We just need to practice. So for me, being grateful, we, we first of all start to look at the small things, right? And that is the first thing when we wake up in the morning that we are already grateful that we wake up, grateful that we can take a breath. The, because again, nothing is for certain, right? Maybe tomorrow morning I don't wake up. We don't know. We think we live forever. So first of all, um, often think, thinking about impermanence. So everything breaks, everything disappears, everything, you know, like my apartment building where I live in, they just, uh, I was born here in this town and uh, the apartment buildings where I, I was born, they now breaking down and because it's old and they're now building new apartments. So everything, comes and goes. So when we think about impermanence, then we're already grateful that we're alive, that we can breathe, that we have some clothes, that we maybe have some water, that we have people and family, that we have the earth. Even in difficult circumstances, I think this could be possible. But we need to really, first of all, ground ourselves in our, in our, in our own body. So doing specific meditations to ground yourself in your body so that you feel your body and you can like, oh, I'm actually grateful that I have this body. Because when we have this body, then it also gives us a possibility to be kind to other people. So we can start with that grounding meditation you said. Yeah. So smog. And I think also what we have to start to see is the interconnectedness between everything. Nothing is solely by itself, right? I, would, I just did a barista workshop uh, just for fun in a friend's coffee bar. And uh, she was talking about how the process of the beans work, how they were planted and then picked and then they had to be peeled and washed. And someone in the little group said, wow, that's a lot of work. This goes through many different hands. So. As soon as I drink coffee, if I see the interconnectedness of it all, then I'm not just grateful for the coffee, but I also need to be grateful for the plant, for the coffee bean, for the people who pick it, for the people who wash it, for the people who sort it, for the people who pack it, for the people who ship it to Holland, for the people then who, who bring it into the cafe, then for the lady who owns the cafe, and then automatically we see that being grateful for the coffee triggers so much more. And this is with anything. This is the same with the water, right? We say, oh yeah, but the water just comes out of the tap. But it's not true. The water needs to be caught somewhere. Then there need to be pipe. Pipes what come up to the apartment building. So who made these pipes? Who laid the pipes? Etc. 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 So again, we see that interconnectedness. And then we realize that everything in life is interconnected. And when we realize this deep interconnectedness through practicing with the symbols and mantras, for example, in the system of Reiki, practicing with the meditations, practicing with hands-on healing, then we also become more and more grateful and more loving. Because then if I 
am not loving to myself, then automatically I'm not loving to everybody else, right? Because of the interconnectedness. If I'm not grateful to you, then I'm automatically not grateful to myself. And it's the same with love. And therefore, as you were already saying, love and compassion and gratefulness is one and the same thing, eh? ultimately, just a different word. But so therefore, I also really start to see the interconnectedness of things, of myself, no mom, no dad, no friends, right? No air, no friends. So I have to be grateful for the air. No house where, where, or even sleep, or a little mattress, or a cloth, or a shoe, or everything is dependent on other things. And, and so then when we can see this, even the food we eat, you know, is dependent on the, the rain, dependent on the sun, dependent on the earth, dependent on who picks it, who grows it, who brings it to the shop, or who brings it to you, etc., etc. So for me, this is also a very important element of this gratefulness and kindness and love and compassion. So for me, uh, when we wake up, first thing, grounding in your body. Oh, I'm being grateful that I actually open my eyes, grateful that I'm breathing. And at that moment, remember the interconnectedness with everything and also remember the impermanence of everything. Then already we set up the day in a, in a very different way. So even our suffering is not permanent. Even our, our happiness is also not permanent because they, these can change very dramatically. So I had Tibetan friends come and visit me and uh, they are late 50s and she has rheumatoid arthritis so you'd be taken to the bathroom by your husband, uh, washed, uh, dressed, etc. I They were here for eight days in my apartment. I almost cried every day. It was, they were so grateful for anything and everything. They still have to, they live in the Himalaya, they still have to carry water to their house. She has to, has difficulty doing things, yet she tries them. And the light would, comes out of this couple is just mind-blowing. I, I think I, I said on many occasions that I said other people would be, oh, poor me, look, I can't walk, I can't do this, I can't do this. They are laughing, they're playing, they're having fun. She's making fun of herself that, that her husband has to take her to the bathroom or get dressed. So light-hearted, but that also becomes they they're practicing you know they're practicing specific meditations they're practicing a mindset of being kind to everybody a mindset of being kind to random people in the street a mindset of being grateful for little things in life right it doesn't have to be big things start little 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 and then maybe we can slowly increase that kindness just be kind first to yourself little little bits then kind to your neighbor then kind to people you have a difficulty with like <laughs> this slowly slowly uh, yes that is very important to start with uh, with little steps uh, because when we start with something we want everything uh yeah. on the first day we start when we start reiki we are expecting no my life from the from day uh, i learned reiki must be completely different yeah but uh changes are slow uh sometimes we doesn't see that we are changing uh maybe uh, uh maybe one year or two years uh will pass and we will see wow I'm not the same person. Uh, a lot of people expect uh, in a few days, in a few weeks, and maybe in few, uh, in first 21 days when they yeah. are wor working on their self. Uh, and there, after one more to, or two, uh, in the start, people are doing Reiki. Uh, they are so amazed that they are good energy, good things are happening. And then when first things comes out, uh, I'm angry. I'm uh, I'm not good today. Where is my Reiki now? And they yeah. are 
then when they uh, need to work more on their selves, they uh, stop. Uh, I don't want to see. I don't want to uh, feel this. Uh, because a lot of people are afraid to feel uh, bad, uh, bad emotions, yeah. hard emotions. Yeah. And uh, there is uh, hard to face up with them and say, okay, this is me. This was a part of me. This is my unhealed uh, part of my soul. And uh, a lot of people uh, quitting Reiki before they see uh, all beauties. Uh, which Reiki can give them. What will you suggest to people who maybe uh, maybe are not yet in Reiki or are in Reiki but didn't work uh, Reiki treatment for a lot of uh, time, uh, don't practice uh, Reiki principles? And uh, people say uh, often to me, I didn't work Reiki for two years. I'm ashamed. Oh, sorry, Reiki, my, you, I, I'm Reiki teacher of them. Oh, sorry, can I start at once uh, from all the, from the beginning? Uh, am I losing uh, my uh, energy and my abilities with Reiki? What do you say uh, said to that kind of students? Yeah, first of all, we I already teach this also from Reiki one, but first of all, we already Reiki. Yeah? So Mikasui called it the great bright light. So we are ready this great bright light. Uh, just like today, it's very cloudy here. And uh, uh, then when the clouds part, we say, oh, it's becoming sunnier. But that's not true. The sun is still there. So even that now it's super dark and cloudy, I cannot see the sun. The sun never left. So your, your great bright light never left. It's never been contaminated either. Like the clouds don't contaminate the sun. Oh, it's like this. Um, but because we always focus on the clouds, I can't do it, I'm not good enough, I'm angry, I'm worried. We always focus on the more negative side of things, right? Then we don't see the sun. So the more we say, okay, I have a choice. I can focus on the negative side or I can already say, okay, I do have like this Tibetan Kofa, I do have rheumatoid arthritis. This is the clouds, but at the same time, that sun is already shining. So if you shift your focus to the sun instead of the clouds. So for example, maybe we woke up, wake up in the morning and you feel, oh, I can't be bothered to get out of bed. I'm painful at like this. I, what a shit show, who will I, blah, blah, blah. Now we're focusing on the clouds. So we wake up and say, let me train myself. Okay. I'm grateful, I'm breathing. I'm grateful, I'm alive. So we're already shifting to look at the sun. Where is this light within myself? Where is my true light? Then we focus on this. Sometimes when we switch on the light, yeah, switch on, for example, in my living room, I start to see more. I see more the dust, I see where it's a little bit messy. So then it gives me the opportunity to clean. So this also, the more we practice, particularly in the beginning, suddenly, as you said, we feel this anger or this worry, and then we get sometimes a little bit frustrated or scared by it, but that's wonderful because if we can see it, I can do something about it. Yes. If, this, if my room is constantly in the dark and I can't see the dust, and yet I'm constantly sneezing, then I cannot do anything about it. But when I switch on the, loud, the light and I go, oh, actually there's lots of dust. So now I can sweep it. My sneezing will be gone. Do you know what I'm, so what I'm saying? So this is so important, but this is also taking self-responsibility. I think also now uh, we blame a lot of things. Eh? We blame society, we blame our partners, we blame culture, we blame so many different things. In China, China, there is in Taoism and also in many Tibetan, many Japanese teachings, they say if you blame someone, you're kind of off the path. If you blame yourself, you're half on the path. If you blame no one, you're on the path. Uh -huh. So also, when we keep blaming people, then there is no gratitude, right? So 
we also are slowly, slowly need to take this self-responsibility. For me, the system of Reiki is about self-responsibility. I take self-responsibility for my well-being, for my love, for my kindness, for my gratitude, so that I can then spread it. And this is self-responsibility. And when I feel more this luminosity, this light, this compassion, and hopefully a compassion what doesn't change according to circumstances, then of course that energy is very different than if I constantly blame people and keep pointing outside of myself. It means no gratitude. But if I then take that self-responsibility and say, okay, I'm grateful. Now we slowly, slowly take self-responsibility. The blaming softens. And now we have a more compassion what doesn't change according to circumstances like this. But it's with anything. If I start to go to the gym, in the beginning, I have lots of muscle pain, right? God, shit, it's hurt. But we know it's, it's okay. Or sometimes I explain it like this to uh, people. If like, maybe this is a top I haven't, I've been wearing for many, many years. And now I'm going to wash it in a bucket. And when I wash it, the water gets all a bit dirty. But I celebrate it because I know the top is getting clean, right? So it's the same when we start to practice. In the beginning, this water gets a little bit dirty. All the anger and stuff is leaving you. All the frustration is leaving you. What is left is your great bright light. And what is this great bright light? No anger, no worry, being grateful, being true to our and being, being compassionate. And then when someone bumps us, love and compassion passion comes out and not anger and worry and blaming and frustration, that kind of thing. So it's really easy in a way, but therefore also we have to be very honest with ourselves. We have to hold up the mirror to ourselves and say, I've been practicing the system of Reiki. Is my anger softening? Is my worry softening? Is my blaming softening? Is my fear softening? Is my compassion increasing? Is my love increasing? Is my gratitude increasing? So these are also some things what we can look at. And if it's not, if it's the opposite of what I just said, then we have to look at, are we actually practicing correctly? Is my blaming or anger and worry increasing? And my kindness decreasing? Then we're not practicing in the right way, right? So this is something we can look at for ourselves. How is my daily, for today, my daily attitude? And we can use this as a great way to show more compassion to ourselves. Oh, actually, I do still get worried. I do still get pissed off. Wonderful to experience because then we can do something about it. Right? Yes. So we can now uh, let cultivate uh, gratitude you can do your meditation on gratitude and oh, show uh, people how we can meditate on gratitude. Perfect. Some simple meditation, uh, which can all of uh, person which are here uh, join us. So you can uh, write in comment if you will join this meditation, which will fry, translate. Perfect. And okay. we can start. Perfect. So sit first, make sure you sit nice and straight. When we sit nice and straight, our breathing becomes easier. The energy can flow easier. And when we sit nice and straight, our mind already starts to settle. Why? Because everything can slowly go more into your body. So we sit nice and straight. Then we take a few deep breaths into to your belly when we do these deep breaths into the belly already we feel the mind going down into our body into our center we feel the breath and the air going deeper into our body so we grounding ourselves into the body out of that crazy mind what is more up in our head, so we're slowly grounding ourselves. Very important, particularly in these times.
And then we focus on that right now already, even that sometimes we don't see it, sometimes we don't feel it, that we are ready is bright light. We don't have to create the bright light. We don't have to enhance the bright light, just like the sun. This luminosity, just like the sun. Everything is luminous. Everything is warm and soft and glowing. Behind the clouds, the sun is always there. So shift your focus. If you feel a pain or a discomfort or you're upset about something, shift the focus to that luminosity, what is already your essence, right today, right here, right now. Then we realize that we also don't have to increase our energy. Just like the sun doesn't have to increase its lights. And then with every breath we take, feel this deep interconnectedness with all that is. Feel the connectedness with our parents, and we're grateful for our parents because else we would not be here. Even if you had arguments or you're upset or maybe you don't see your parents anymore, without them, you would not be here. And therefore, we also have to be grateful for our grandparents. No grandparents, no parents, no you. Slowly, we're increasing what we're thinking about. We're grateful for the earth because no earth, no us. Deep interconnectedness with the earth, with your parents, with your whole family heritage, all your ancestors, they also needed the earth. We're grateful for the air, no air, no you. We're all breathing the same air. There's no specific Dutch air, an English air, or French air. It's all interconnected already. We're all breathing the same air. We're all standing on the same earth. And we're going to be grateful for water. The water comes as rain or from rivers and again it's all the same water no water no you I'm going to be grateful for fire. What is this fire? Is the sun, for example? Again, there's just one sun. There's no Dutch sun or Belgium sun or German sun. We're all sharing again that same sun. We're breathing in that gratefulness for the sun, the fire. We're breathing in that spaciousness. Spaciousness is touching everybody already right now, inside and outside. And again, that spaciousness is not bound 
by a town, by a culture, by a country. So we're grateful for being right here in our body. That's earth, water, fire, air, and space element. What we all share and it's exactly the same for everybody. And if one of these elements would disappear, we all would disappear as well. So when we're grateful for these five elements of earth, water, fire, air, and space, we start to realize this deep interconnectedness with everything. And it gives us compassion, a kindness, an openness, a spaciousness in which we can dissolve our anger and worry, in which we can be grateful for whatever comes our way, for whatever is happening. Because we have now let go of our anger and worry, and we can be grateful, we feel more, more true to our way and our being. And that in itself will lay bare a kindness, a love, a compassion, but that doesn't change according to circumstances. Ground it in your whole being every single cell of your physical body emanating the great bright light of love and kindness, of gratitude, of being Reiki. And in that space, we set our intention that everything of this interconnectedness takes from this gratefulness whatever they need. Just like rain falling down on the earth, the rain is not making any distinction between countries or people. Just like, like the sun is not making any distinctions between anybody, no distinctions between race or cultures or who, who they are or who we are. The rain and sun is just unconditional love and kindness, nurturing and shining. Now we place our hands physically just around the navel area, grounding yourself again into your body into your core, into your center, realizing that you've always been this light and you will always be the light, no matter how many clouds there are. And we take a deep breath and slowly open our eyes again. That was so amazing. And I want people to leave comment if they are, uh, if they, uh, if they are agree with it. 
and uh, you touched the both topics uh, love and gratitude as i said there is uh, we yeah. can't uh, separate them no. so i don't i i will not go <laughs> meditation no. because uh, it's so uh, it's so enough so uh, fulfilling and uh, thank you friends for this beautiful energy for, for this beautiful meditation for your uh, beautiful words we can uh, talk a, a little a little more uh, in few few minutes more so uh, you can see com comments so thank you everybody which uh, which were here uh, which supported us we while we are doing this live i can't believe one hour uh, uh, yeah. left so so fast um, and i believe when we are uh, doing uh, things which we love a lot and uh, which is our purpose which is uh, I think we so. are here for this yeah. uh, times uh, time goes uh, on different way uh, one hour when we are doing something we hate we don't want to do something which is hard to us which is not fulfilling for our soul then one hour is so long and when we are doing uh, beautiful things like this like meditation like uh, talking about gratitude about love about compassion about uh, our reminders th there is life reminders uh, this what we talk about uh, what do you say about uh, time uh, do you yeah. agree when we are working some hard stuff uh, it can't pass at all and when we are doing beautiful stuff it goes who <laughs> where is yeah, because, time? Uh, because at that time we're also really focused and we we kind of really we feel this spaciousness and time is just a man-made construct right yes it doesn't really exist i mean like we already know because different people from different countries are joining is a different time maybe even already a different day <laughs> so we already know it's it's not a truth right it's a construct and the more we really tap into our inner true nature that bright light being divine being being buddha nature whatever we call it we realize this timelessness and then at the same time this interconnectedness start to even solidify even more so within our mind body and energy we realize oh it's already like this and therefore is is so much better in a way because we we often get so caught up in time we also get so caught up in past events or in future ideas or even in past things and then when we got caught up in these three times again we we become very con like condensed and we cannot be playful anymore we cannot shine this light anymore we have all these layers we worried about the future we angry about the past we're not grateful about the present moment so even the precepts when we look at this eh, it's all about time so there's many different layers to this uh, and we must uh, uh, oh, i don't want to use that uh, word must uh, you should uh, exercise to be in the present moment oh, absolutely. because a lot of people doesn't know how to be in the present moment we worry about the past yeah. worry about future worry about what we will do in two in two hours we are uh, at least here but we are not here we are everybody not uh, here and now yeah. how we can practice that uh, to improve that well i mean this is, is really what we've been doing because as soon as we focus on the body and this is what all these traditions say eh, in yoga first you do body practices tai chi same thing when we meditate we first focus on the body we plant our body in a specific position the body is always here the body is not in the past or in the future the body is always here then we focus on the breath so the breath there's no past breath there's no future breath so again the breath is right here when we focus on the breath and the body then the mind can also be in the moment and normally my body is right here and my breath is right here but we don't focus on it and we get caught up in the mind and we all get distracted so the the mind is in the past or in the future or contemplating the present moment so when we focus 
maybe when we focus on drawing something, eh? in fact, we really focus. Already we're more in the present moment because we're thinking about how we sit, how we draw. Then it's the same thing. Eh? When we do hands-on healing, we focus on our hands really in the present moment. These kind of practices, so therefore always we first, we have mind, body, and energy or speech or breath. And therefore, we focus first on the body, very tangible. Then we focus on the breath, a little bit less tangible. And then the mind, what is very subtle, can fall into place. So very simple. When you do something, stay in the present moment, focus on your body. When you're cooking, when you're sitting, when you're bike riding, when you're in the office, and maybe be focused on the breath then we already can be more and more in the present moment and not so caught up in the past and the future. So very simple things to do when we're walking in town, when we're having a coffee, when we're at work, when we're with a partner, really body, breath, mind. And people think that uh, only meditation can be when we are in the, some perfect place, uh, there is a quietness, there is a, we are on some... Uh, uh, on some uh, meditation place, uh, but we can meditate while we are cooking, while we are <laughs> breathing, while we are walking, while we are running. Uh, what, uh, which is the best way uh, to start meditate for a person? Which uh, because you are a meditation teacher too. Uh, what is your advice uh, to a person? Maybe is first time here on live and want to start meditate maybe to start learning reiki maybe to start have spiritual practice uh, how can they start what is uh, meditation which is uh, i can say easiest way to start yeah ultimately uh, we have to realize that meditation is not a body posture uh the other day someone said oh yeah I, i'm meditating a lot i said i asked them well, what is meditation and she goes, oh, when I, I close my eyes. I said, so when I'm closing my eyes, I'm meditating? Or maybe I'm asleep. This is not meditation. So first of all, we have to know what is meditation. Meditation traditionally is a state of mind. A state of mind of not being distracted by past, present, future. So as you can say, we can do this in anything we do in our life. But to help this, sometimes difficult to do. So sometimes to help us we sit down so we sit down feel the body feel our breath and in the beginning better to do small moments so a small moments many times better to do a five minute or a two minute really focused oh here's my body here's my breath and my mind settles for two minutes and then do another two minutes half an hour later or an hour later and then like this, then sitting there for half an hour and you're actually daydreaming or you're half asleep or you're unfocused or whatever. So sharp, focused moments on your body, on your breath and on your mind, start with two minutes. Sit and then slowly increase this and then slowly also see that it's not something we necessarily do on the pillow on a meditation stool, but in our daily life. So maybe your hobby is painting. Realize that when you really focus when we're painting is also meditation. When you're talking to someone, instead of talking and constantly looking at your phone, focus on the person. Listen what they have to say. Feel your body, feel that interconnectedness. Then we're also this conversation becomes meditation like this. Thank you very much for this and you said once again uh, big changes start with little steps yeah so uh, this is very important to start with anything with a little tiny steps and appreciate every little step and don't accept, accept uh, immediately changes but uh, appreciate every little change you see at yourself so france you can say something for the for the end of this live thank you very much for being my guest for sharing your knowledge but when i said knowledge i don't think on information i think more of this you gave us a, a beautiful a beautiful energy uh beautiful uh questions a beautiful uh a beautiful 
way of uh, thinking. So thank, thank you for that. Well, thank you very much for inviting me and thank you to all the listeners for joining us. Uh, really great. I love doing these kind of things. And uh, yeah, enjoy your day. Be grateful. Share this love. Feel this love within yourself and, and keep sharing it and keep grounding your love in your own way, in your own being. So thank you so much. Thank you. And if you enjoy this live, share it with your friends. And thank you, Franz, once more. Thank you. See you.